So today I wanna to focus on content creation, more specifically the things I've learned from making over 800 videos and getting to that incredible milestone, like a million subs on YouTube. And these are around mindset, creativity, and the practice of just content creation. Okay, so the first thing, this is one of nine here, so we can track along with how this is going. The first thing that I've learned is that you've got to put in the work to show up every single day to do the best you can with what you have in the time that you have and to be patient. This is a long grinding process and I like to think of it as the infinite game of continuous self-improvement. The only metric that you should measure yourself by is whether or not you're having fun and if you're learning something. As long as you're having those two things, stay out of the numbers for some time. So here's point number two. The longer you play the game, the better you get. This idea of persist and resist is a phrase that I picked up from Ryan Holiday in his book, The Obstacle is the Way. So what does persist mean? Well, persist simply means do not give up. Don't give up. And resist is resist the distractions. And distractions come in many sneaky forms. It comes in the form of negative feedback, low views or likes, or even low monetization numbers. Point number three, ignore those who don't care about your success. And to realize that no opinion can hurt you without your permission. And it's really strange to me, and this happens all so often, that people say, Chris, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? And if I say something nice, they're like, oh, that really just gave me the boost that I needed today. But then I think to myself, well, who the heck am I? And why would you give a, a stranger uh, the power to control your state? This is not a good idea. It's not a good, healthy way to live your life. I'm happy to tell you your work is good. I'm also happy to tell you your work needs some additional work or maybe that you need to switch careers or this is not right for you. But why do you invest in that? I want you to think about that. Point number four is to try new things, to, to make mistakes. Now, it's easy to say to try new things and we all think we should try new things and that's where innovation comes from, except for when we have to do it ourselves. We're afraid of doing new things, things that make us uncomfortable because the risk of failure is actually really, really high. And so we've been trained uh, mostly through our education system, through our parenting, our culture, our community, our society, to do what we can to avoid failure. And that's the natural human instinct is to seek pleasure and avoid pain. But what we do is we fail to fail. We need to fail more. And failure, if you want to reframe it in your mind, is really an opportunity in disguise. It's where everything that's been good in my life is because I've been able to overcome that failure and I've learned an important lesson. A failure is the tuition you pay for success. There are detailed instructions on how to succeed. So whatever you do, don't waste a good failure. Point number five, done is better than perfect. And I know this sounds like, yeah, duh. But here's the thing, we live in a society, in a culture, especially in the creative community, where we're always chasing perfection. It was kind of ingrained inside of us when we're going to design school, like make that desk unit amazing. Like all the corners are perfectly sharp. You can cut your hand on it. There's no weird flat spots where there's not supposed to be. And so it's this pursuit of perfection. It's even a motto or a tagline for a car company. And what happens is all this stuff prevents us from doing our work, the practice, if you will, from Seth Godin. So I found that this process of making small iterative steps more likely to lead to real breakthroughs in your work. That perfectionism is the enemy of execution and perfectionism is a form of procrastination and it creates too much pressure on you to do the work that you need to do. It prevents you from showing up and doing the work every single day. Number six, to be generous to help others. And this is the secret to success. And this is what I've learned. And I've just talked about that. One, it feels really good to do. Nothing feels better than to help somebody and for them to say back to you, you, you helped me out on a dark day. Uh, this is exactly what I needed 10 minutes before a uh, client call or, hey, I, I got the job. One of the best things that's happened recently is we had Petrula Vrontaikas on talking about how to interview for a job and to, to nail the interview. And this person had sent me a DM in Instagram and said, it's been months, I, I got no opportunities, I'm, I'm just, I'm not getting any 
job opportunities and, and I just keep losing on the interview. I'm not winning here. And he said, hey, watch this video. And like magic, 30 days, less than 30 days later, this person DM me. It's like, Chris, I'm so thrilled. I'm so thankful. I just landed my job. Thank you so much. Point number seven, we are really poor judges of our own value and talent. It's only through creating, expressing our ideas and then releasing them into the wild can we know what we know. I know that's weird. And, and there's this uh, cliche uh, that teachers and speakers believe. And it's this idea that we, what we want to do is to make a difference in one person's life. And it's totally true. And so if you work towards that and you start to understand that if you create enough content, somebody out in the universe is going to connect to this piece of content, whatever it is that you have to say, and tell you some incredible story. And it's going to reaffirm your belief in yourself and it's going to allow you to see yourself from a whole different lens. Number eight, that plans are overrated. Mike Tyson famously said that everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. And the problem with plans is they, they blind you to unforeseen opportunities. My advice to you when it comes to content creation is to move in a direction and adjust as you go. And there's a real reason why you want to do this. I find that a people get stuck in the planning, preparing stage the entire life. And, and then they, they never get to the actual making of things. It's it's a paralysis by analysis, right? They're just sitting here thinking about it because they want to have that perfect plan because they don't want to fail. They don't want to waste any money. They don't want to make any mistakes. And so they just plan. They're just lifelong planners. And if your your business is planning, well, congratulations, you found the right job for you. But for the rest of us that are trying to make something to, to create and express our form of art to the world, you got to just make. Okay, last point here, point number nine, is what makes you weird makes you wonderful. So in his book, Fec Perfection, hopefully I said that right, it's still a kid-friendly show here, James Victoria, the celebrated designer, wrote, what makes you weird as a kid make you great today. And that being different, this is me saying now, being different is a competitive advantage. You need to lean into it. And what we realize um, is this, is that if you read enough, if you trace back, if you do the, uh, the, the Austin Kleon thing, which is you trace back the source of an idea, the genealogy of an idea, you realize there are so many people who are basically repeating one source from many, many years ago, maybe hundreds or even a thousand years ago, that there's no shortage of information in the world yet. Every single day pops up a new author, a new influencer that then builds an audience around what they're doing and saying. How are they able to do that if if you believe that there's nothing new under the sun? Well, the idea is this, is that what people tune in for is you, your personality, your very unique voice. Okay, so here we go. The, the nine things that I've learned in getting to 1 million YouTube subscribers. Here they are. I'm going to go through this pretty rapid fire. So what I've learned is that you need to put in the work to show up every single day and do the best that you can. Trade short, temporary reward for long-term meaningful gain. Number two, the longer you play the game, the better you become. To persist and more importantly, to resist. Stay away from those distractions. Number three, ignore those who don't care about your success that no opinion can hurt you without your permission. I think there's number four, I'm losing count here. Try new things, make mistakes. Failure is opportunity in disguise. It's detailed instructions on how to succeed, so don't waste a good failure. Number five, done is better than perfect. Small iterative steps are more likely to lead to real breakthroughs. Number six, to be generous, help others. It feels good to do so, and it's the best way I personally know how to be successful. Number seven, we are poor judges of our own value and talent. Try looking from the eyes of someone who admires you. See what they see. Plans are overrated. They blind you to unforeseen opportunities. Move in a direction, adjust as you go. And lastly, what makes you weird makes you wonderful. Being different is a competitive advantage. Hi, my name is Greg Gunn and I'm the producer of The Future Podcast. And yes, we do have a podcast. In fact, We've been having one for years and that's exactly why I'm here talking with you. You see, it's really good and I think you should listen to it. If you like what we do here on YouTube, then you're gonna love what we do on the podcast. 
You'll get to hear intimate conversations and personal stories from some familiar faces and others you might not know about yet. Plus, you can listen to it while doing something else and you won't miss a thing. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, go visit thefuture.com slash podcast or find it on your favorite podcast listening app. I hope to see you there.